friends, another fun part of the Rolex Monterey Motorsports reunion. They tend to have each year a vintage Formula One class and the most recent entry in terms of construction, 1985 Tyrrell 012, driven by our man Martin Brundle, my pal Steve Raymond, who I've worked for in the past as a mechanic. Uh, he looks after this for its awesome driver and owner, Steve Romack. Just want to show you the car. It's a, a pretty wild tale about what it's been through to get here. This beautiful Tyrrell has been through, it's been through some things to get yes. to its current state of true gorgeous preparation. Uh, before we get to the car's history and provenance and such, uh, our good man Steve Romack had a experience uh, a couple years ago where, let's just say the part of the front of the car where his feet were supposed to be kind of got exposed. A uh, bit of a, a... We don't like to talk about yes, that. Yes, we don't like to talk about it, but boy, that... And those, or show pictures. Those like photos, uh, yeah, they were a little bit worrying, but tell me about getting this car back into, you know, tip-top shape. Uh, this tub had to get sent back to England to get uh, redone. Why don't we start there, and then we'll go talk about its uh, its history afterwards. But that was a pretty incredible thing you had to do yes. to get this vehicle back. Well, we, we needed to strip it bare, um, and uh, the engine was even checked for any damage, and the engine block was bent. So the what? engine block needed to be replaced, not repaired, and uh, so then completely rebuilt. And um, we took that time to duplicate all the suspension. Um, and then so we had a whole full set of spares, but the suspension was original from 1985. All mild steel built by Tyrrell. Um, we found guys in the UK with the jigs. Um, Liaz Jakarta, who we couldn't have done this without. Um, we tried to keep it as original as possible. Um, we chose to do the digital dash because it gave us more room in the cockpit. Um, and we added the smarty cam and the data gathering. How about from a bringing the tub back into full running order? Obviously we see got the, uh, the carbon top on uh, above honeycomb and whatnot. So we, bringing we this back tried to, to keep it crazy. as original as possible and add some reinfor reinforcements. So the same catastrophe would not happen again. So um, the, the tub has Immaculate. been strengthened um, and uh, we have not raced the car since. It's only done test days. This will be its first race. And then we will be racing at Coda in October with Formula One, with Masters. Let's talk about the pull rod front suspension, Steve. It's that got, is just, it is wacky. It's not a traditional pull rod this pulling on a This is Tyrrell's rocker. idea, and it pulls on the bottom of the shock. The, the bottom of the shock travels up and down. Not The pull rod does not activate a rocker. It actually uh, is up and down in a cylinder, basically. The shock drops yeah. into and has rollers uh, that pull up and down, which I had thought I knew a lot about front, Formula One suspension. Front and rear. Yeah. Front and rear I'm learning is the same design. I didn't know I'd be learning. So we were on our own with chassis setup with spring rates and all um, no notes from the day um, so we have evolved to what we are today so we made spring changes yesterday wow so we are um, still working on this and it's an interesting car from a formula one technology standpoint uh, the last to run naturally aspirated engines uh, before going to a Renault Turbo became the last team basically to go to turbos, if I remember correctly. But part Correct. of trying to exploit whatever they could out of a uh, venerable Cosworth uh, V8 in the back, getting rid of big side pods. So if you want to talk about being exposed, uh, right? So uh, uh, there's not a whole lot there to protect you. Uh, and the O12 started out the first year of flat bottom. Yep. So. That's why it ended up like this. 
They did add side pods with the turbo motor to house the intercoolers and bigger coolers. Um, Tyrrell held out with the, the, their vote for the smaller fuel capacity because they were the only ones running a Cosworth. They didn't allow Formula One to, it took a unanimous vote to uh, make changes. So they Another. kept the fuel capacity at uh, what it always was until Tyrrell lost their vote. Another aspect, Steve, about these uh, the O12s that always struck me as interesting is the uh, pocketed machine rear suspension, the upper A-arms in particular, look a very thick billet uh, again, again yeah. machine and pocketed here. I don't know if we'd call that the most aerodynamic setup uh, no, in suspension yeah. design, but it was something that Tyrrell was fond of doing inboard brakes as well. Correct. Somewhat yeah. unique at that rotating mass from the outside, the unsprung weight, get that to the inside here, uh, wheels and whatnot spin a little more freely and such. You can see the pull rod design, as you mentioned, sitting basically encased in a uh, shaft to be pulled up and down there. Very, very unique for the era. But look at this thing. Not only the ginormous rear wing and the almost vertical upper element, but if you want to talk about an aero, I mean, that's what you got here. It's been described as a lawn dart. A lawn dart. Uh, a Tyrrell designed oil tank, transmission case, bell housing. They did it all. Um, it was all done in-house, you said. Yes. Um, Bespoked diff, axles, brake hats. Um, all this was unique just to this car. Um, Tyrrell was using this earlier, some of these designs for their ground effects car, the um, 011 and even the 09s. Um, I like the little attention to detail here too, Steve the end of the uh, radiator ducting and housing and shrouding here, just inside the inside of the tire. Yeah. Just a little bit of mesh to keep uh, any rocks and whatnot from being thrown. And still allow airflow yep. to yep. go through the radiator. Um, so cool. A lot of thought went into this. It might not look as complex as some of the turbo cars right. of the era, but th this was not a low ambition car by any means. And a jig, and a mold, and a casting um, unique to each year. Um, there were developments within the year. So they would change the uprights, um, the pickup points, um, so they would have to have a whole nother jig for the front and the rear upright. Brother, thanks for taking some time to show us uh, Steve Romax Hot Rod here. Hopefully the rest of the weekend goes well for you. Thank you. We hope so.